As Hurricane Florence gets closer to landfall, the storm's outer bands have already begun to flood the east coast. Here's a video of Old Glory just hanging on as 100 mile per hour winds rip into her. We have learned tonight, though, the Humane Society of Missouri Disaster Response Team is actually preparing now to head to North Carolina to help with animal rescues caused by the storm. Humane Society of Missouri is actually um, trained in, in swift water animal rescue. Uh, so yes, we, we go to a number of hurricanes, you know, if, if we're requested by outside agencies, perhaps FEMA, SEMA, another organization could request us. So yeah, we're, and because we're centralized, we're not affected by the hurricane. The team expects to leave this weekend or early next week. They take animal transport trailers, a horse trailer, a couple of boats, water rescue gear, and enough supplies to be self-sustaining. I think what's interesting about this storm, we've been talking about it for, what, five days now. So you've mm -hmm. had a lot of warning. People have had a lot of ample time to, to get out, get to higher ground. And now we're here ready for the event, right? Right. And, and a lot of times that's what you get with these types of Cape Verde type hurricanes, the ones that develop <clears throat> from tropical waves that are coming off of Africa like this one did. This storm, Florence, actually developed back in late August. So it's been around a while and it looks like it's now finally set to make its rendezvous with the East Coast. In fact, the outer bands are already on shore. The eye wall, which is this part of the storm, isn't too far from the coastline. In fact, the center of the storm is only about 45 miles from the coast, but it's crawling along now, moving northwest at five miles per hour, and uh, that's why it's going to take a little bit of time to get the storm actually onto the coastline, and that won't happen until sometime late Friday morning into fr Friday afternoon. Now, the good news is this storm is not the monster that it looked like it would be a few days ago. In fact, right now we're looking at a low end category two hurricane. Yes, we're going to get some coastal flooding. We're also going to get quite a bit of wind damage because the wind field of this storm has expanded in size. As the inner core of the storm has fallen apart, that's allowed the wind field to expand and it encompasses a very large area. In fact, tropical storm force winds, the diameter of that area is roughly 350 miles and the diameter of hurricane force winds is roughly 100 and 30 miles. So it's going to be a large area that deals with a damaging wind threat and of course with the slow motion of the storm uh, as we wrap up this week and head through this upcoming weekend as it moves to the Carolinas eventually begins to get picked up by a system that's off to the west over the weekend and a doorway opens and it allows that storm to finally move north and then northeast across the northeastern U.S early next week, but over the weekend, as it's slowly making its way across the Carolinas, it is going to be dumping a tremendous amount of rainfall. In fact, there are going to be locations here from Charleston northeast up to about the Outer Banks uh, that are probably going to pick up one to two feet of rain. And interior areas of the Carolinas up near the Appalachians could see as much as a foot of rainfall, and that will very likely lead to some very dangerous flash flooding. Also, there's the threat of tornadoes, and a tornado watch is in effect. Uh, for coastal areas of North Carolina. Oftentimes, you can see if we kind of quadrated this uh, storm out, it's this front right quadrant that you see making its way on shore that is responsible for most of the tornado potential with these storms as they're moving inland. Locally, weather conditions are quiet. Uh, it's a good thing that we've seen the active weather, though, that we've had over the last month that has really helped to ease the drought conditions across the Ozarks. Here's today's latest drought update, and you can see conditions continue to improve across Arkansas and Missouri. And we've actually got surpluses for the year now. It's Springfield, West Plains, Harrison, all looking at more than an inch of rainfall above normal through this point in the year. The upcoming uh, week looks like it's going to stay quiet. We're going to find clear nights, partly cloudy days. Temperatures and humidity levels are going to lean toward more of a summerish feel. We're going to find that overnight tonight, 68 for a low. For tomorrow, we'll see a high of about 87 degrees. So, yes, it'll be warm, but not bad weather for football. And if you're going to a Friday night football game, uh, say kickoff at 7 o'clock, looks like we're going to find really decent weather conditions, about 82 at kickoff. And by halftime, temperatures will have slipped into the upper 70s under starry skies. We're looking at an 8 on our color radar. Your 7-day forecast, again, looks warm and quiet through the weekend. And we're going to hold on to that through next week. In fact, I don't really see much hope for any rain any one of those days, but rain chances look like they may perk up by the end of next week. Well, I'll tell you, everyone for Friday <coughs> Night Football is excited that they're not going to be needing those umbrellas and yeah. rain gear because it was uh -huh. really wet last, last week. Last Friday night was just a washout. This Friday night looks like it'll be perfect. Very nice. How about our viewers club number? Uh, that number tonight is 234-931, and our jackpot stands at $500. All right, Jamie, thank you. Coming up next, a natural birth center is offering a new type of pain management for women in labor. Yeah, on the way tonight, more on nitrous oxide for soon.